think Jesus is pretty direct in the gospel today when he says, Ask and you shall receive, seek and you shall find, knock and the door will be opened. He says, Everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks the door will be opened. And they are given not just a good thing, they are given the Holy Spirit, that is the third person of the Trinity. By the way, the Holy Spirit is considered the down payment of our salvation. We read that in Scripture. What God has in store for us, the third person of the Trinity, is the down payment of it. So, whatever, whatever we have in store, whatever God has in store for us, is greater than the third person of the Trinity. Let that sink in. Because sometimes... We are like the Galatians. We are a little without sense. And sometimes we want to focus in on you know, one word or another in the scripture. But the Galatians, it's interesting, they actually had mighty deeds being worked among them because that was normal fare for Christians. This is what we hear St. Paul saying. Did you experience so many things in vain? Does then the one who supplies the Spirit to you and works mighty deeds among you do so from works of the law or from faith in what you heard? So we heard Jesus say, Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door will be opened. We either think we have to earn it and be good enough for God to bless us, or we put our faith in the words of Jesus who says, ask and you shall receive, seek and you shall find, knock and the door shall be opened. Now this is difficult because I bet if I took a poll and asked how many of us have ever been disappointed because of the fact that we didn't receive what we prayed for, I bet all of us would raise our hands. But we want to remember that God is always good. And sometimes this is what happens. We read in Scripture in, in, the, in the letter of James that when we ask, sometimes we ask, but we don't expect to receive. Or we ask for our own passions instead of out of trust in good, the goodness of God. And so, you know, he, he says, sometimes you don't ask, period. And sometimes you ask, but you ask wrongly. And so we want to ask the Lord to examine our hearts today and show us what's going on in our hearts. Number one, does, do our hearts contradict our mouths? Do we ask God with our mouths one thing, but then in our hearts say, God, I don't believe you're going to do this? Do we align our hearts with God and say, God, I know that you will good things for your children? Do we continually proclaim God good in the midst of difficulties? Or do we say, you know, oh God, you you didn't will it. You know, sometimes we will, and and this is part of the senselessness sometimes of us as, as Christians, sometimes we'll say, well, God willed the disease or God willed something evil. God might permit it, but that doesn't mean that he wills it directly. God's will is that we all be raised from the dead in the eternal life that Christ Jesus provides for us. And so therefore we know that God's ultimate will for every single person, his will is that they be saved. And that means that they be healed, that they be forgiven of their sins and delivered of all evil. That's God's will. We know this because Jesus Christ died for us. We know this because God gives us the Uh, the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus in the Eucharist every single day. And Jesus promised that those who eat his flesh and drink his blood will be raised up on the last day. Now, all of this, and I might be a little excited this morning because Tuesday night a group of us were praying online for a woman who had arthritis in both shoulders. We were praying, and she said, well, the pain had gone down a little bit, but she still experienced pain. She didn't know why. We didn't know why either, but 
I was really excited. God gave me the supernatural gift of faith, which is one of the charisms of the Spirit, that I just knew she was going to get healed. So I had to keep believing. It's like, no, God is saying she's going to be healed. Some of the other folks were praying. I was praying. Well, yesterday she went to the doctor because she has regular doctor visits. And the doctor took an x-ray and found out that the arthritis was completely gone. Completely gone. And she said, well, well, why am I still experiencing pain? The doctor said, your muscles are so weak because you haven't used them that when you go to use them, they hurt. So they had atrophied a bit. So she's now going to go to to physical therapy just to build up the strength of those muscles. But the arthritis, which was crippling her, is gone. Why? Because a group of Christians, a group of Catholics, understood the scripture that said, Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door will be opened. And we persisted. We were persistent. We had to persevere. It wasn't just pray once and then done. Because she was still reporting pain. So we just kept praying and kept praying. Until we, we, we said, okay, we think, we think we're done. So brothers and sisters, I want to encourage you this morning. And obviously... Homily is going a bit longer than normal. To put trust completely in God. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, as we heard in the psalm this morning. That Savior is Jesus. He is our Lord and Savior. He is the one who tells us, He commands us to ask and receive, to seek and to find, to knock and the door will be opened, to persevere in prayer. I'm sure many of you could get up here too and give testimonies of times that you have prayed and your prayers were answered, not just that your prayers weren't answered. And so we want to fixate our attention on that instead, the goodness of God, that God always gives good things to his children, no matter what the earthly outcome is. Amen.